Hey guys, Brendan of Productions here, and welcome back to How to Create Snake in Java. This is part three. In the first two parts, we actually covered our plan for the game, which actually um, covers a, using tile types as a method of keeping track of where things are. This method has since been abandoned. We also need to still implement a direction in order to know which direction the current snake is traveling in, and on top of that, we've covered essentially everything in this grid. So let's go ahead and jump right to the code. So, so far we've got our paint method complete and our draw method complete. We just need to insert our move method. So what our move method is essentially going to do is it's going to use the logic um, that was implemented in part one. This type of logic um, takes, it adds a new point to the front of our linked list and then it deletes the point that's in the back, which is kind of sad. Anyway, once we want to do once we do that, our snake will actually be moved. But the first thing we need to do is we actually need to address what direction our snake is moving in. So what we want to do is we actually want to create a new object that will keep track of what direction our snake is moving in. So we want to go ahead and say private um, and the direction is actually just going to be an integer. So int direction equal to it's going to be zero at the moment. And then what we need to do is actually make an enumeration that handles these things. So we're going to go ahead and make a new class, and this new class is going to be called Direction. And all of this class is, is it's going to simply be an enumeration for certain directions. So we're going to use the ghetto method of enumeration once again by simply using um, private instance variables, or public instance variables, that are final. So we're going to say public static final int, and this direction is going to be no direction. So nothing is going to be moving, and that's going to be equal to zero. Public static final int north is going to be one. Public static final int south is going to be two. Public um, static final int west is going to be three. And public static final int integer um, east is going to be four. So now that we've created the direction class with uh, five directions, we can go ahead and go back to our snake canvas class, and instead of actually making our direction equal to zero, we can make it equal to direction dot no direction. So the current direction of the snake is nothing at all. All right, so then in the move method, what we actually want to do is we actually want to address this and move the snake in that direction. So the first thing we want to say is we want to say if, or we're just going to say switch direction. So we're going to use a switch statement here, which is the same as cascading ifs and else ifs. So we use the colon for the classic switch. Um, oh, wait. How do we do switch statements? I completely forget. That is semi -embedded. Embarrassing. Um, I don't think we use the colon, actually. I'm pretty sure we insert as as a block. So what we want to do is we want to say case. Oh, that's right. So switch statements, we're just going to switch on our direction here. And if the case happens to be direction.north, or yes, north, what we're going to do is we're going to say a colon here. And this is going to deal with our direction if it's north. So. In order to actually do this, what we want to do is we want to save where our first uh, point is. So we're going to say point, and this is going to be the head of the snake. So head is going to be equal to snake dot, and then what we want to do is we want to get the first um, point. So this is going to be the peak first method, which essentially just gets the first point on our linked list. Now keep in mind that the peak first method is um, unique to the linked list item because what we want to do is go in chronological order. So this allows us to simply grab the first item with no problems. So if the case, um, if the direction is north, then what we want to do is add a new object to the, um, to the snake. Right? Right. So um, what we're going to say is... Um, Okay, but what we need to do is instead of actually adding it to the snake right away, we need to actually create a new point that then, once we create the new point, we can actually scan it to see to make sure we're not colliding anything. So we're also going to say point uh, new point, and this is just going to be equal to head. 
uh, currently. So what we want to do is, if the case is direction.north, we want to move the head up. So we're going to say new point uh, equals new point, and then we want to send it an x and a y. So since it's only moving up, the x is going to stay as the head x, and the y is going to move uh, down one. So we're going to say head dot y um, minus minus one. And this is essentially because um, wait yes, uh, because when you're drawing things on the screen. Um, the y coordinates only go down, and they start at zero at the top of the screen. So the next thing we need to do is actually set up a new case. Whoops, I exited out of my switch block. The next thing we need to do is actually set up a new case for um, uh, south or whatever direction we want to do next. So we set up a we say break to actually get out of our current case statement. We're going to say case direction dot south, and in this case we want to say new point equals new point and say head dot x and this time we're just going to move the uh, head down one point. So what we're doing is we're creating a new point right that um, that is in relation to our head point. So if we want to move up we just create a new point that's one space above where the head is. If we want to move down we create a point that's one space below where the head is. And same thing for east and west. So if direction dot west is our current direction, then we want to say new point equals new point. And since west is going left, uh, we want to actually say head dot x minus one, and we're going to keep our head y point. We're going to break out of that, insert a new case direction dot um, east is our last direction, and we're going to say new point equals new point. Uh, head dot x plus one because we're moving right this time, and we're going to say head dot y, and then we're going to break out of that. Now, if the direction is no direction, the case stay these uh, cases will not be triggered, and the point new point is simply going to equal head. So we're not actually going to move anywhere. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to scan this for um, to actually see if it's anything in particular. So what could it be? Well, let's see. Um, in Snake, there are a few things you can actually run into. You can run into fruits, you can run into walls, and you can run into yourself. So the first thing we'll check for is, is see if the new point is where the fruit is. So we're going to see if new point um, dot equals, and we're going to actually just send in fruit, then, well, the snake has hit fruit. We'll deal with this later. Else if new point dot equals Oh, actually, so we're just going to make sure it's in bounds, or out of bounds, rather. So if the new point, point dot x, is less than 0, or new point dot x is greater than, now keep in mind our width is actually the grid width times the box width. So, um, but... <laughs> But um, the box width and grid width variables are actually only necessary um, when we actually draw them on the screen, I believe. Um, yes, so what we want to do is, so when we're actually drawing things on the screen, so we're going to have an XY grid that's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right? But when we actually draw them on the screen, we want to actually draw the points onto places that correspond with the box width, which means we're going to have to actually alter our draw methods a little bit. So instead of simply drawing at p dot x, we're going to do p dot x times box width. And our p dot y is going to be times box height. Same thing with our fruits. Our p dot x is going to be box width multiplied by box width, and our fruit dot y is going to be multiplied by our box height. In this way, we're going to be moving boxes down when drawing the object. This also allows our calculations to be super easy over here. So we want to say if new point dot x is less than 0, which means we're far off to the screen to the left, we went out of bounds on the left, or new point dot x is greater than, um, so this is going to be grid width, um, then we went out of bounds. Else, if new point, now we can check the y coordinates, dot y is less than 0, so that means we went up too far, or new point dot y is uh, greater than grid height, so we went below 
um, where we need to be, we went out of bounds. And finally, if none of these occurs, we need to check um, if the if we're crashing into our own body. So the way we can do this is by saying if um, our snake link list dot contains our new point. So essentially, if um, our body contains the point that we're moving into, well, then we are going to have a very bad time because we're about to move into ourselves. Right? Right. Now, the only problem I foresee is if you're entering the space where the tail used to be and then the tail gets deleted at the same time um, the head moves, well, then you're going to be able to move that because they're simultaneous movements. And in fact, that is the way it's going to have to work. So else if the snake dot contains the new point has to actually occur after the tail is deleted. So what we want to do here is before we actually um, draw the head, we're actually going to want to delete the tail on this thing. So we're just going to go ahead and remove the tail before we actually calculate any of this. So we're going to say snake dot uh, remove and we want to actually send in an object and we're going to remove the snake dot peak peak last so we're just going to um, throw away the the last dot there um, before we do any of these calculations so then if the snake dot contains a new point then it's really running into itself um, we ran into ourselves do you see what I'm saying there so what we're doing is simultaneously we're going to be deleting the tail and then moving the head forward. So if we actually move the head forward without deleting the tail, we're going to be running into, this would actually trigger an event where we run into where our tail used to be because it was deleted. Since we delete it, however, before any of these calculations take place, this will no longer be a problem. In theory, what we're just going to have to see. So then once all of this is done, um, so if the snake hit fruit, if we went out of bounds, um, we ran into ourselves, whatever. Um, so this will actually reset the game um, because we lost, and this will reset the game, and this will reset the game. So this will actually break out of our current move loop. Um, so what we want to do here is if we've reached this point, so if we reach this point in code, we're still good because resetting the game involves ex exiting out of the move because we're going to cancel the thread. So if we reach this point, then we're actually just going to want to add the head. So we're going to say snake dot uh, add. Oh, no, no, no. We want to add it at the first uh, position. So instead of saying add, we're going to push. We're going to go ahead and push it into the first position, which is equivalent to add first, if um, you don't understand what push means. So we're going to push it into the first position, and the point we're going to push into the first position is new point. So this, go ahead, this goes ahead and moves all the other objects back into their place, and we insert the new point into where it needs to be. Hooray! So now we have our basic moving done um, with um, our loop. So we've actually created a direction enumeration, and we've created our movement. So the next thing we need to do is we actually need to make sure um, this all works by popping it into an applet. So I believe this is part three of this tutorial, and part four will cover how to actually pop it into an applet, and we're also going to cover um, adding in a, the uh, user controls. So the user can actually control the snake and tell it where to go. So thanks for watching part three of how to make a snake game in Java. Um, Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.